In this video, I'm going to be covering section 3-3, Measures of Relative Standing. I'm going to be breaking this video up into three different parts for the three different um, measures of relative standing that we're going to be talking about. Uh, so in this video, I'm prim primarily going to be talking about z-scores, uh, and then in the next video, I'll talk about percentiles, and then the third one, we'll talk about quartiles. All right, so before we begin, a pre-skill that you need to uh, know is uh, evaluating expressions with fractions. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a couple of these. So for example, in number one, uh, the most important thing that you have to know when you're working with complex fractions, or not complex fractions, but fractions with operations in the numerator or denominator, right? So in, in this first fraction, we have an operation in the numerator. So the important thing is that you want to evaluate um, uh, the expression first, the, exp uh, the operation. You want to perform those operations first so that you have a single value, and then you can proceed to um, divide, right? It, uh, so let's go ahead and sh show you how that's done. So for this one, we're going to evaluate uh, 83 minus 74. So 83 minus 74. So essentially what we get there is we get 9 over 6, right? And then once we have that, then we can divide um, to get uh, an, a decimal number or an answer, right? So in this case, that's 9 divided by 6. And we get 1.5. So using your calculator, if you have a TI-84, uh, I just want to point out how to do this properly. You can do it in uh, in separate expressions or separate uh, inputs and outputs. Like for example, what I did here, right? Figure out what the numerator is and then perform uh, the division or you can do it in one expression. So for example, if I wanted to do this in one expression, I have to put parentheses around the numerator. So very important, you have to put parentheses. So watch me do this. And then close parentheses and then divide by six. And sure enough, in one expression, right, in one expression, just typing this out in one expression, I can get the answer of 1.5. So I know the answer is 1.5. A common mistake I see a lot of students make each semester, um, despite me telling warning students ahead of time, is they don't put the parentheses and they don't get the correct answer. So let me show you the incorrect way of doing this. So doing if um, inputting it like this would not give you the correct answer. So we know that 70.66666 is not the correct answer, right? We know the correct answer is 1.5. Now why is that? Uh, the reason why is because without putting the parentheses around the numerator, order of operation is going to kick in and it's going to um, do the division before the subtraction. Um, order of operation says we have um, division and multiplication is performed before subtraction and addition. So that's what happened here. They divided the 74 divided by 6 first, and then that value is subtracted from the 83. So that's not what you want to do, right? Okay, so um, the other ones are pretty much the same. Uh, if you want to practice and do it, um, it'd be a good idea if you're weak on, um, you know, if this is all new to you. Okay, so let's jump right into the meat of the content. Uh, actually, before that, let's let's look at this situation. So here we have, um, uh, pr uh, you took four exams in four different classes, the mean scores and standard deviation for each exam and your score is listed below. So consider this situation. You take four exams in four different classes, four different subjects, and this is your the mean score for the class for each of the classes, and then this is the standard deviation for each of the classes, and then this is how you scored. So the question here says, which exam did you perform the best relative to your classmates? Which exam did you perform the worst relative to your classmate? So relative meaning as compared to um, the class, what was your best score or your worst score relative uh, to your classmates? So for example, you scored an 80. How did you compare uh, with, uh, with um, you know, the, the math students? 
And is that your best score? Uh, you know, is it better than the 75 as the 75 is compared to the other students in the in the verbal class, right? So pause the um, video if you want just to think about this. And then I'll in a couple of seconds, I'll uh, give you guys the answer. All right. So now, again, we're talking about relative to your classmates, right? So you're comparing your 80, for example, you're comparing your 80, your score of 80 in this math test with the students in the math class, which has an average or a mean of 82. And in the 75, you're not comparing it to the 80 here. You're comparing it, uh, you're considering um, your performance here with, with the uh, other students in the verbal um, class, right? And then likewise, the 70 here, you're comparing it with those other students who took science, who scored on the science, who had a mean of 60. So given that, um, the, the best score, relatively speaking, would be the 70. It would be the science. So the score, relatively speaking, the best score, relatively speaking, is the science. And then the worst score relative to the class, um, to the classmates would be the, the math test. Now, why is that? Well, here, here, here's my explanation. So with the 80, you scored below the mean. So you scored below average. With the 75 here, you scored, uh, your, your score was average, right? You scored at the mean. Uh, with the 70 here, you scored above the mean. So you score better than average. And then with the 77 here, you scored um, above the average as well. So for sure, we know this is the worst score because that's the only score where you scored below the mean. Uh, but then why is science the best one? So we know this is at average, but these two are above average. These two scores are above average. Why is the science better? So one way to think about it is 70 uh, compared to 60 is 10 points. You score 10 points higher than the average. Uh, whereas 77 is only seven um, points above average. So you score seven points above average. But you can't, let me give you a warning, you can't just compare that. You have to take it a step further and see how many standard deviation um, was that 10 points in this case. So let me kind of put it all together. So in, in this problem, we know we scored, in this score, we know we scored above, I'm um, sorry, below average. This one we scored at average this one was 10 points 10 points above the mean but then when you consider 10 that's that is two st standard deviations and I'm going to abbreviate standard deviation as, as ST so it's two standard deviations above the mean uh, whereas the 77 here is seven points above the mean but then that's only one standard deviation above the mean. So that's what we're going to um, talk about today. This is a very important concept right here. And that's what we call um, the number of standard deviations above or below the mean is what, we, is what a z-score is. So a z-score is exactly that. So a z-score is the number of standard deviations a given value x right a given value x is above or below the mean and we typically round z scores to two decimal places in this class so here's the formula for for um, finding a z score so given that you know an x value whatever value it is it, in for this example up here these up here were x values right given that you know an x value to find the z-score, you would take, you would find the difference between the x and the mean, and then you would divide by the standard deviation. All right, so that's what this formula is saying. Uh, so let's get some practice with this. <clears throat> so um, let's say on the chapter one and two exam, um, the mean and standard deviations were the following. So the mean was 60 and the standard deviation was six. And the question says, find the z-score for each exam. 
So for example, uh, a student who scored uh, a 92, what is their standard deviation? So in other words, how many standard deviations did they score above or below the mean? That's essentially what the problem is asking. So we're going to use a formula. So we're going to go, uh, we know it's uh, x minus the mean, right? So that's 92 minus 80. And then we're going to divide by 6. Right? So essentially, again, essentially what we're doing is we're finding the difference between what the student scored and the mean. And then we're going to figure out, well, how many standard deviations is that? And, and to figure that out, we have to divide by 6, right? So here we have uh, 92 minus uh, 80 is 12 over 6. So a difference of 12, and that is two standard deviations, right? So that is two, uh, that is uh, positive two. All right, 12 divided by six is two. <clears throat> okay, so moving uh, forward, uh, we're gonna do, do the same for all of them. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'll, I'll show you guys the answer uh, while I pause it, or you guys should probably pause your video as well and work it out to see if you have the same answer as mine. Okay, so these are uh, the answers. These are the correct answers. <clears throat> so take a moment, take a look at it. See um, if you have any anything that you see or any pattern that you see or anything that jump out at you. Uh, so what, what I want you guys to get out of this, or one of the things is, uh, notice how when you scored above the mean, so for example, the 92, right, is the only score that is above the mean. When you score better than the mean, you get a positive z-score. So the positive 2 here represents or is interpreted as uh, two standard deviations above the mean, right? This 92 is two standard deviations above the mean. And then with, a, uh, with any z-scores, or I'm sorry, with any score that is below the mean, so for example, a 62, 71, and 31, that's below the 80, you're going to get a negative z-score. So a negative z-score, so for example, if the z-score is negative 3, that indicates that would be interpreted as three standard deviations below the mean. So this would be 1.5 standard deviations above, below the mean. This would be approximately uh, 8.17 standard deviations below the mean. Right, so negative z-scores um, indicate that the value is below the mean. And here, just real quickly, uh, negative 49 divided by 6 uh, is negative 8.16666 and we rounded it to two decimal places so the six here is a correct round off spot and this six increases that to a seven and that's how we got this answer approximate approximately all right and then finally the the next takeaway is if you score uh, exactly at the mean right so the student here scored an 80 the mean is 80 so if you score at it, the mean well, it makes uh, the, the z-score is going to be zero, and it makes sense, right? This interpretation means you didn't score, you, well, I guess you, you can say you scored zero standard deviations above or below the mean, right? Okay, so that's what <coughs> z-scores is. So the when you score above the, the mean, it's positive. When it's below the mean, uh, the z-score is negative, and when it's at the mean, it's zero. And the z-score is interpreted as the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. All right, now uh, certain times or certain situations, you're going to be given the z-score and you're asked to find uh, the x value. So in this case, x values are uh, is an exam score. So in that case, you're going to use a formula that this formula right here. And before I use this formula, uh, we'll just talk about this, right? So uh, for let's try to reason this out. Actually, this was a typo. This shouldn't have been 98. Um, we'll we'll make up a number like I don't know, like um, let's do like three positive three. Yeah, z score of 98 is just uh, too high. All right, so so for example, let's let's take a look at this problem. So a student has a z score of negative five, and the question is, well, what is their exam score? So if you think through it, and if you understand what a z-score is, then you know that if, if you have a z-score of negative, uh, of negative, the value, the, the x value, in this case the exam score, should be less than the mean, right? A negative z-score um, has an x value that is less than the mean. So that's what one thing that you got to know 
for sure. So if you work out the problem and you don't get something less than the mean, then you know that's a red flag. You, you made a mistake. And then you also know that that's five standard deviations of below uh, the mean, right? So what that what that tells you is your x value, which is your exam score, is you're going to start with the mean, which is 80. And this is interpreted, you can interpret it as five standard deviations below the mean. So you can do like something like um, minus five times the standard deviation, which is six, right? There's a standard deviation. So you can do like that. And then it, what this works out to be is uh, you have 80 minus 30, right? Five times six is 30. So that's going to be 50. Okay. So you can figure this out by reasoning, uh, kind of reason out the uh, what the interpretation of a z-score, uh, or you can use the formula, which is you know works out the same way. So for example, if you're using the formula, you have the mean, and then you're going to add uh, the z-score times the standard deviation. So we're going to go the z-score is negative five times six. All right, and, and which works out to be the same thing, right? We know that subtracting is the same as adding, um, you know, a negative. So if you work this out, if you want to pull up your calculator and see how to work this out, you, you would do the following. So you would go uh, 80 plus uh, negative. So the negative sign is this guy right here, right below the three. Don't do the subtraction. That's not the negative sign. So the negative sign is negative, is the, the, the button right below the three. So negative five and then times six. So that's how you get 50. Uh, or alternatively, if you, if you input this in the calculator, you could have done that as well. So 80, and now this is subtraction, right? This is the subtraction sign. So that's going to be 5 times 6. Okay, so work the other ones out. Check your answers against mine uh, just to see uh, in my notes to see if you got the correct answer. But just know that when you have a positive z-score, you know that the value is going to be greater than the mean. So in this case, this X score for this Z score for these two is going to be above 80 and this one we know is going to be below 80 so that's just one way to kind of reason out or, or check to see if your answer is reasonable so now here's one application of Z score so this um, in this example we have the mean height of adult males is 69.1 inches with a standard deviation of 2.8 inches the mean height of um, Adult females is 63.7 inches with a standard deviation of 2.7 inches. And the question is, who is relatively taller? So is Kevin Garnett um, with a height of 83, is he relatively tall? Is he taller than Candace Parker, who has a height of 76 inches? And again, we're talking about relatively taller. So what we're saying here is, is Kevin Garnett as a male as a man, is he taller than Candace Parker as a um, as a female? And to one way to figure that out is to figure out their z-score for their height. So here we can figure that out by using the z-score for their height. And again, the z-score is equal to the mean. I'm sorry, the x value. So in this case, Kevin Garnett's x value is 83 minus the mean. So the mean for um, adult males is 69.1 divided by the standard deviation for male heights, which is 2.8. Right. And then likewise, we're going to do the same with Candace. So her X value, her, her height is 76 inches. And then the mean for female, because she's female, is 63.7. And then uh, divided by the standard deviation for the female's height, which is 2.7. All right, so working this out, so I'm going to pause the video and then I'll, I'll have the answers. So uh, I'll let you, you guys should pause your video just to see, work it out, see what you guys get. Okay, so these are the Z scores you should, should have gotten. So for Kevin Garnett, uh, his Z score for his height is 4.96. So he is 4.9, his height is 4.96 standard deviations above the mean height of males. Whereas Candace Parker, her height, um, is 4.57 standard 4.56 standard deviations above the female height so that would in, in, that would indicate that Kevin Garnett is relatively taller so Kevin Garnett as a male is 
taller than Candace Parker as a female. All right. Uh, so this question, you guys can work uh, this one independently. Check on my notes with uh, uh, to check the answer to see how you guys did. All right. So summary of z-scores. Um, a z-score is a number of standard deviation that a given value is above or below the mean. If a data value is less than the mean, you have a negative z-score. If a data value is more than the mean, you have a positive z-score. So um, we can also talk of, about the z-score in terms of the range rule of thumb, right? So if you guys recall, the range rule of thumb said, uh, talked about um, like significantly low values versus significantly high values, right? Or and not significant. So if you guys remember, this uh, it says that the sig low values is um, the mean, so x bar minus two standard deviations, right? This is lowercase s, two standard deviations, or lower, right? This is from section 2.3.2. And then the significantly high values are the mean plus two times the standard deviations or higher. So we can we can um, in, we can use z scores to kind of restate the range rule of thumb. So what does that mean? So we know that the mean um, the z score of a mean for the mean is zero, right? So let's, let's pretend this is a z score. This this number line represents z-scores and each of these is a standard deviation so one of these would be like going to the right would be like one two three and so on right it keeps continuing and then going to the left it'd be negative one negative two negative three so this is one standard deviation above a z-score of one means a standard deviation is above the mean and then this is two standard deviations above the mean and these are below the mean so if we interpret, uh, if we write, or we think about the range of thumb using z-score, what we get is that uh, significantly low values are negative one, has a z-score of negative one and less, and significantly high values, I apologize, I meant to do uh, negative two, z-score negative two and less, and for significantly high values have a z-score of positive two or more. So this is your sig low and this is your sig high and in between there is your not significant values. All right, now why is that? Because the range rule of thumb, recall this range rule of thumb said the following, right? So the mean minus two standard deviations is the same as having a negative two z-score and below, right, or lower and below and then the mean plus two standard deviations or higher is the same as saying a z-score of two and higher all right now how does that become um when is that useful so for a, a problem like this uh we get the following so it's uh we it says uh, is an adult male with a pulse rate of 48 beats per minute significant given that the the mean Sample mean pulse rate for men is 67.3 beats per minute, and the mean or the standard deviations is 10.3 beats per minute. So for a problem like this, we can figure out whether it's significant using the range rule of thumb by figuring out the z-score for this male, right? This male here has a, a pulse rate of 48. We can figure out his z-score for the his for the pulse rate, right? So that'd be 48 minus the mean, 67.3 and then divide by the standard deviation. So uh, let's see what we get. So the answer that we get rounded to uh, two decimal places, negative 1.87. So that's the z-score that we get. Uh, so now, is that significant? Is, is a z-score of negative 1.87 significant? Uh, no, it's not, because the way we interpret the z-score of negative 1.87 is with negative, we know it's below the mean, so it's below the mean, right? This, this pulse rate is below the mean, so it's 1.87 standard deviations below the mean, which puts this person's um, pulse rate or z-score about right there. So that's negative 1.87, which is in the not significant area, 
right? So now had this this person, this adult, his pulse rate was like lower than it would, and their Z score was like negative 2.5 or something like that, then it would be significantly low. But in this case, it's not. Okay, so hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, I'm gonna end the video right here, but if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out.